Hey everyone, Larissa here from Beekeeping Made Simple, and this video is for beginner beekeepers. I've done some videos about how you can make money beekeeping and selling your honey and labeling and things like that, but for the beginners out there that just have one, two, three hives, and you just shelled out a whole bunch of money on your equipment, and maybe you're looking to make some money right now, um, or this year when you're starting your hives, here are some tips for you. First of all, you're not going to be making a lot of money off of each beehive, especially your first year. Uh, it partially depends on how many hives you have, where you're located, how much honey you're bringing in, and all those things. But um, here are some things to work a little bit smarter when it comes to selling your products. So... Um, First off, if you have just a few hives, you're not going to be, you know, like selling beekeeping classes or nukes or queens. I mean, even if you could, that's not something you want to be selling because you want to be building your apiary. You want to keep your bees and you probably don't have good stock yet. You have whatever someone gave you. Um, so or, you know, cutouts or swarm removals, you're going to be selling some honey, some beeswax and things made from your beeswax. So this depends on where your hive is so much, how much honey you can expect to get. But for the most part, maybe even getting like maybe 50 pounds of honey from one hive, another hive is going to be a dud and it's going to maybe bring in like a few pounds of honey, maybe enough honey just to like get you through the winter. So you're wanting to average it. Even if you say you're getting like 50 pounds of honey on average that you can harvest from your hive, you're going to spend like a dollar per jar, maybe another like 10 cents per label. You sell a one pound bottle for eight dollars minus the cost say you're making seven dollars off of that um i mean you can expect to maybe make about two to two hundred and fifty dollars if you're selling it direct to the consumer and making that maybe a dollar an ounce kind of uh sale so you can expect to get about two to two hundred and fifty dollars if if you have your hives in the decent location you're going to be bringing in like maybe about 50 ish pounds of honey um so that's okay and if you can sell to friends family you start to sell to stores you're going to have to half that price and you can sell like you know to markets and stuff but where you're really going to make your money is in the beeswax sales and that is because um you can have a much higher price point now there is a little bit more money you have to spend on products but um you can get an eight ounce canning jar for about a dollar a piece. You can do candles. So that's half coconut oil, half wax, because you do not put 100% beeswax into glass jars, uh, into containers for candle making. It doesn't, when it hardens, it shrinks and it um, won't sit in the jar well. So if you do 100% beeswax candles, they're in a mold that you pop out. Otherwise, you're putting it in jars and it's 50-50 wax to oil. Now, at Costco, I can get a giant tub of coconut oil for 20 bucks, like, you know, this size tub. So assuming that you're getting a good deal on some coconut oil and not spending, you know, $12 for like um, this little jar at the grocery store, you can sell those candles for a lot more than you can actually sell your honey for. But the other thing you can really make some money off of is something that's really popular right now, which is the beeswax wraps. And that's taking uh, nice cotton fabrics with nice patterns on them. You want to make sure this is 100% cotton because this is used, being used for food. And you use a little bit of wax and there's a couple of other materials. You can find these um, recipes to make them online and you can make beeswax wraps. And it's essentially reusable cellophane. Now, um, you can uh, sell those. I mean, you can look at pricing people have on Etsy. People sell them and use this one woman. I saw the first one I looked at. It was a three pack, small, medium and large beeswax wrap for twenty five dollars plus shipping. Um, and Etsy is a great place to start that off at. You know, you don't want to sell like on your own personal website right off the bat because it's really hard to get people to go there. But you can either sell it to your friends and family and coworkers and on Facebook marketplace um, or at the farmer's markets. But if you really don't want to do mar 
farmers markets. Like me personally, I don't want to spend my weekends at the market. Uh, Etsy is a really great place to also do that. And it's not in a glass container, so you don't have to deal with things breaking when it ships and all this packing material and all that junk that you have to do. So like beeswax wraps and chapstick are actually the two big products that I recommend doing now you're going to need to harvest some beeswax but that shouldn't be too too difficult because um if for one you're at the end of the season your queen's going to be laying a whole lot less and you're going to have all of this empty comb from where she was laying that you should be able to melt down now this has to be comb if you're using it for beeswax right lotions or anything going on someone's body or touching food you want to make sure it wasn't wax that was in the hive when you used a treatment but um other than that you can have the that beeswax and you can use that i mean you can even buy beeswax to be honest you don't have to tell people that the beeswax came from your hives <laughs> you're a beekeeper and you're selling products made from the hive i it, you don't want to mislead people and you don't want to lie to people, but it is still a way that you can um, make some money. Uh, and especially after you harvest some honey, you're going to have frames with comb, drawn out comb. Now you can hold on to those frames and give them back to the bees the next year. But there's a good chance you're going to have rodents and insects eating those frames. So it's better to just harvest that wax, which I have um, a three part series on how to harvest your own beeswax and make it into really nice clean wax using just like, you know, like a $30 slow cooker you get online and some old t-shirt material. Um, doesn't require a lot of money or materials. And you can harvest that wax and chapsticks and beeswax wraps are really popular products. And when you make that chapstick, make sure you have flavors because people like flavor chapstick. Now you can um, sell to friends and family and to coworkers and online and stuff. But um, if you're not much of a salesperson or you don't enjoy doing that kind of stuff and having to meet with people because it's kind of a pain in the butt and farmers markets and stuff are also kind of a pain in the butt and cost money and you have to get a tent and you have to get a table and chairs and pay to be at this market. Um, so if you want to not do all of that, give them to people's gifts. <laughs> You will save so much money at Christmas time if you just make some nice beeswax wraps, get a piece of craft paper or whatever, and make a little stamp. You can carve a stamp with a honeybee, buy a nice little honeybee stamp for like $10 and stamp it or have your labels printed. Some make some stickers or whatever at Vista Print and give them as gifts to people and give them like get some little jars like the tiny little jars you know maybe they're like four ounces um the little bear jars something that looks cute make the beeswax wraps make some chapstick a chapstick a tube of chapstick is 0.15 ounces and that is just part beeswax and part some other oils. It is a very minimum amount of product you are putting in that tube and selling for, I mean, Savannah Bee sells it for $350, but you'll see them that go way up into much more expensive um, chapsticks. So you go to a party, you're going to a friend's place. You can just, instead of buying a $20 bottle of wine, bring them a jar of honey send people these gifts these to people as gifts instead of um you know buying stuff and you'll just save a ton of money that way over the course of the year instead of having to sell it but also you can sell at churches and um you know you at your office and um school and all of those things are ways that you can sell without having to i wouldn't go to stores and to be honest i wouldn't start at the farmers markets either because they have a lot of overhead to start with the table and the tent and all that stuff and you know you might not like it your first or second year your bees might not survive the winter and you might get really annoyed so you want to keep the amount of money you're investing into selling your bee products to a minimum your first few years now it's so it is easy if you're going to do the beeswax wraps and the chapsticks and maybe some hand lotion i mean those come in four ounce jars and um you can be selling that for like 12 dollars. so those have a way higher profit margins than the honey does and you're going to harvest a lot less honey um it's just really important to not be too greedy when harvesting from the hive uh 
you know, you don't want to just take everything and leave them with like some sugar syrup and a candy board. Um, you want to leave them the honey that they should be needing for the winter time and you want to take the excess. And what you want to do most importantly is split your hives. So you can take all this time and make all these products and maybe make like what, two, three, four hundred dollars. Or you could take the two hives that you have that are doing well your first year, split them. So now you have four hives. And come the spring of next year, the chance that at least one or two of your four hives make it to the spring is pretty good. The chances that you start out with two beehives and one of them or two of them make it to the spring is actually kind of low. Um, I mean, in nature, bees are swarming because one in three every of every hives in nature technically should be surviving on their own. So as a beekeeper, maybe you can increase that to like uh, one out of every two hives will survive over the winter. But you really shouldn't be expecting to have all of your hives survive. So if you want to save not having to spend 200 plus dollars on a nuke come next year, split your bees, have four small hives instead of two large ones. And come next year, you won't be shelling out another two, four, five hundred dollars on more bees. And even though you're not making money, um, that season, you're saving a ton of money come next year and you're investing in your bees. So what you just want to make sure you do is you have that equipment for those extra hives. That being said, you can always just take some of that little bit of wax, that little bit of honey and make some products that don't that are small. You know, you don't want to be selling like these 16 ounce jars because you're going to have like five or 10 of them. And then that's it. You want to sell the smaller products or you want to give them as gifts and um make the beeswax products because they involve a whole lot of other stuff other than beeswax and you can make a decent profit off of the beeswax wraps and chapstick especially and then once you've been doing it a while you can expand to things that require a little bit more knowledge um especially just like after a year or two you know especially if you're going out with your bee association and other experienced beekeepers swarm removals and cutouts which is where you're taking a beehive out of a spot space where they already live you know they're not swarming and hanging off of a tree branch but they're like inside someone's closet or in their house or something um that i mean you can make three to five hundred dollars over the course of that afternoon removing that swarm and you, you might want some insurance and you're probably going to want a ladder um you probably already have like some kind of jigsaw or something you're going to need to be able to cut open some spaces. But that is a really great um, way to make a profit without having to sell anything. All you need is to just get in with some of the pest control places. And once they have your name on a list of people that they can call, when they get a call about a swarm of bees in someone's house, um, they'll call you. And you don't really have to do much at all. And then, um, you know, you can harvest more honey and you can start to sell to stores and stuff like that. But your profit margin, you're going to be making a lot less. You're going to be selling a lot more and making a lot less per jar because they have to increase the price. So you're going to be selling it at half price. Um, and that's when you really need to have a lot of product in order to start to make some money. So right off the bat, while you're first getting started, one, I really can't stress enough, just build the apiary so that you don't have to buy more bees next year. And not only so you don't have to buy more bees, but so that you get a stock of bees that are actually like doing well and dealing with your environment well and surviving and thriving. And you want to take those hives that are good honey producers and just keep splitting and splitting them so that you have a yard of really good honey producers producing bees. If you, um, just buy a new nuke from people every year that your bees don't make it. You don't know what you're getting. They don't know what they're giving you. They might have some good queens, but those queens are mating with who knows who. And um, they don't they don't know how well their queen is doing when they give you that nuke. They're just giving you a queen and a hive that has legs, that has eggs. She's laying. There's some honey. There's some bees. There's some brood. Put it in a box. Send it off to people. They don't, they're not like, you know, inspecting this to make sure it's like a super duper thriving hive. Um, so you want to get off of that train of having to buy bees 
as soon as possible and build your apiary. And that will really pay off in the long run in two or three years. But I really can't stress enough how the beeswax products are going to make you a lot more money than the honey is and to just put them in small containers <laughs> so that it just kind of makes it look like more. Um, and if you're selling, giving it to friends and family, another great thing to do to make it a little bit more fun, especially if you've given everyone honey and they still have some and they're like, ah, I don't need anymore. <laughs> you can start to make new honey products off of them. You can cream your honey. You can add lavender or um, you can add cocoa powder to your honey to make it taste, uh, to make it like a chocolate syrup honey. Um, you can add ginger and turmeric and make it like a cold elixir that you can give to people. There's a whole bunch of things you can do with your honey if you um, are at a loss for products and you don't have enough people to sell honey to and the people you already sold to don't need anymore, <laughs> which is kind of the, the, the problem with selling to friends and family honey. It's I live in like Kona, which is coffee country. And so people drink coffee every single day. Some people drink coffee all day long. So it's easy to sell coffee. People are on coffee subscriptions because they just constantly need to buy more coffee. But someone buys a 16 ounce jar of honey. Like how long is it going to be before they're coming back to you to buy that jar of honey? I mean, they might, even if they put it every morning in their tea, it's going to take a while to use up a two pound bottle when you are just taking a teaspoon from it every single day. So those can be some of the problems you come across when you're first getting started selling and why you want to just, um, uh, just, just go back and forth between different variations to the same beeswax on honey products that you have and see what works and what doesn't work. And gosh, the more products you can sell that aren't in glass jars, the better, especially if you're going to be shipping it and going to get an Etsy site or um, shipping it to friends and family uh, that don't live near you. The more stuff that's not made of glass, the less headache you're going to have. Just trust me on that because um, shipping honey is a pain in the butt. And one thing I recently learned is do not use biodegradable packing peanuts in <laughs> your boxes with honey because anything that leaks um, will shrink your biodegradable packing peanuts and they will shrivel up. And then your jars of honey are just shaking around in the box and everything ends up breaking. All right. Uh, ask questions. Um, and I did see one person said that they were going to make some candles in mason jars. Just keep in mind, when you put candles into glass containers, there's a certain, I mean, especially beeswax, beeswax melts at a higher temperature than other waxes. So um, if you're going to put beeswax in there, I mean, you obviously wanted to, to do it 50-50, the coconut oil to beeswax so that um, it, it just looks a lot nicer and, and it hardens nicely without the cracks and everything but also just don't have the wick touch the bottom because if the wick touches the bottom of your glass container almost any of these small thin walled glass containers it can cause the glass to crack and break so you want to leave a little bit of space you don't have to use those little metal crimpets that some people glue to the bottom of the jar i've always just taken strips of wick and dipped them into wax and just held them taut um for a few seconds until the wax dries and hardens and then it's a stiff piece of wick that you can just suspend from the top of your jar um, without having to use any kind of metal pieces and you can take out that step and that extra piece of material um, and you just be careful with with the glass jars um, but they do look really nice and usually people appreciate them so thanks for watching bye